Today, the Feast of San Martin de Tours is kind of special, especially in Rome. The first reason is because, well, the season changes usually right at this, around this feast day. And so the, you know, the, it's already darker, it's already night as it is, a time changed here as well. But in Rome, especially because on the Feast of San Martin de Tours, and it's always by that, that, by that feast, they turn on the heat in the houses because it's already getting cool in there. Already uh, the fall is set in and, and winter is about to come in. And so in, in Rome, we, it, was, uh, it was kind of special for us because sometimes it gets cold earlier, but they wait until this feast to turn on the heat. And the second thing is that they would have the, uh, how do they call it, castañeras, ch uh, chestnuts, chestnuts uh, that you hear that we sing about chestnuts on a, a roasty fire. That's when they begin to roast the chestnuts out in the streets. And, you have el tempranillo, the, the tempranillo vino, that it goes with it, and that becomes a dessert. And so on this day, always at lunch, they give us chestnuts and the brand new wine for the, for the season or, uh, uh, that they take out. And so it's, it's kind of a marked occasion, especially in Europe, uh, this feast day. But also the saint is kind of particular, and again, it's maybe coincidence, or as uh, one of us likes to say, a God incidence, that today's Veterans Day, and it's the feast of San Martin de Tours. St. Martin of Tours was also uh, a, a, a member of the military. He was a Roman soldier. And uh, it's interesting because he is from the ancient church, from that, uh, that, uh, that, that ancient church, one of the few uh, early saints that was not a martyr. And so as we wear white, not red today. And actually for the last couple of weeks, and sometimes we have a lot of red because we celebrate the martyrs. But St. Uh, Martin of Tours of that early church, one of the few that wasn't a martyr. And even more, one of the few military saints, he was not the first one, he's actually a long list of them, that also was not a martyr. Most of the military saints, and they consider St. Sebastian, St. Bacchus of Sergius, many other saints that we have in there that were members of the military, normally they were persecuted and they were killed as martyrs, and that's the way we remember them. But St. Martin of Tours steps out in that he probably was a centurion, and he was probably what we would call today an officer and it, uh, uh, an, uh, uh, an, a high-ranking officer of the Roman legion, already at a time when Christianity had been uh, uh, more widespread and accepted in there, and that, well, he wasn't martyred. He didn't die because of his faith in the, uh, but he died as a bishop. And so it shows us uh, also the growth of Christianity in the Roman Empire with St. Martin of Tours. He was known for as, as being a centurion or riding along, seeing a poor person there already shivering in the cold in southern France, one of the cradles of ancient Christianity. And he takes off his commander's cloak, that crimson uh, cloak or cape that the centurion would wear and draws with the sword and takes it off to cover the poor man that was freezing in the rain as he went on. Later on, he sees that this man was Christ himself, that gospel that we heard right now being put into practice by St. Martin. St. Martin eventually becomes Bishop of Tours, a town in southern France in there, that becomes one of the central points of early Christianity in France. And so he uh, represents that, that, uh, that, that, uh, that early French Christianity as well. But being today Veterans Day, a lot of times I always mention to the young men, whether it be Estovir, uh, uh, that's here, or any time that, that the occasion merits it with, uh, with, uh, with young men, that we see this vocation and this call, this essential call that's exemplified in our veterans, and it's exemplified in those who give their life in service to something greater than themselves. Every man has that fundamental call to serve something greater than himself, to go out beyond himself and serve something greater. Many times it's our country, sometimes it's our community, it could be our family even, well, we hear the greatest gift that one can give is one's life for another, something other than me. We keep as heroes, we recognize as heroes those who give their lives for someone else, those who give their lives in defense of life, of other people's lives. Yet we don't hold in esteem those who, well, who do everything just for themselves, who only sacrifice for themselves and nothing beyond themselves. We don't admire that. And so, being Veterans Day, and we recall those who gave themselves for something greater than themselves, 
for us today, those who continue to serve and also offer themselves for something greater today, we find the satisfaction of that greater call. The greater call, which ultimately is the call that Christ has given us and the example that Christ gives us on the cross. He who gave himself for the Father, for the will of the Father, for nothing greater can be than that. That's what we're called in the Principium Fundamento event, essentially, to give ourselves for that Father, that Divine Father, that Divine Plan, and to put everything we have in the world at our, that's our disposal to His use. We order everything for God, and that's the greatest order that we can do. And so let us continue our prayer, remembering those who have given so much as well, and offering ourselves again in his service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.